If you've ever been to Puerto Rico, or done some research about traveling there, you probably know about the pristine sandy beaches surrounding the island. You might also have seen or heard about the beautifully preserved colonial streets with colorful buildings in Old San Juan and other cities. What you won't see as much of are the in-between places. The kind of places most travelers just speed through on the highway going destination to destination. I love to travel by bicycle because it takes me through these lesser seen places and gives me a more complete picture of what the region of the world I'm traveling in is really like. Sushita and I took a short trip to Puerto Rico this past winter, and in this video I want to show some of the island's beauty and rich history. But I also want to show some of the incredible sights in between the most popular destinations that most people who don't travel on two wheels might miss. The bike touring portion of our trip was only a few days long, so this won't be a very comprehensive guide to traveling Puerto Rico, but we'll hopefully offer some insight into what biking is like on the island and show some of the more interesting things we saw along the way. Hope you enjoy the ride. We started our trip in the capital, San Juan. Neither one of us had been there before and we were keen to do some sightseeing. We wandered around the cobblestone streets and alleys of old San Juan. The downtown is vibrant and the old buildings are well cared for. We toured some of the famous sites like the two enormous forts built by the Spanish in the early 16th century. The larger of the two is called El Moro and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It has this huge sweeping green lawn in front of it and several levels on the inside with views of the harbor. There were lots of tourists exploring it on the inside, along with these guys. You fellas enjoying the view? El Moro also has a long walkway on the outside, beneath the enormous walls. We took the walk all the way to the end, only to find the gate was locked a little early, and just then Mother Nature had a surprise for us. We had to walk the whole way back like this, but luckily it was a warm tropical shower. The weather was hot and sunny most days, but we were warned of spontaneous rain showers and sure enough got caught in a few downpours. It rained so heavily one night, many of the streets flooded and it was a bit of an adventure getting back to where we were staying. After a few days in San Juan, we set about sourcing some bikes for our ride. This was a short trip, so we didn't bring our own bikes from home, but found some reliable rentals from a company called San Juan Bike Rentals. The bikes were fairly simple hybrids with thicker tires and 7x3 drivetrain, but they were well maintained and fully capable for the kind of riding we wanted to do. The owner Robert delivered them to us at our B&B, and he even lent us a pump and some extra tubes in case we ran into trouble. We outfitted the bikes with some bike packing bags we brought from home to carry the necessities and headed out of San Juan. Our ride was going to take us east along the northern coast of the island. The initial ride out of the city wasn't too busy, though we did ride the sidewalk here on a busy stretch of road near some large hotels. We took a break by a beach in Carolina, which was right next to the main airport but still very pleasant. At this point we had a dedicated bike lane along the road and were cruising along enjoying the sunshine. A short distance after Carolina, we entered a nature path in the Piñones Mangrove Forest. This was going to be one of the highlights of the first day of riding, and it did not disappoint. We were separated from traffic and completely surrounded by mangroves, pines, and palm trees on all sides. The path was occasionally paved, but most of it was on these wet wooden slats. Every so often one of the slats was missing, or a large branch was laying across the path, so we always had to pay attention to where we were going. The wood was damp and a bit slippery, so I actually took a small spill trying to make a turn at one point. The stretch was only a few miles long, but I would gladly come back and do it again. At the end of the mangrove portion, there was a long sandy path along the beach. There are many nearly deserted coves to take in the scenery. A few miles later, we got back on pavement and passed through the outskirts of the town of Loiza. About an hour of road shoulder riding later, we found ourselves in Luquillo at dusk. We stayed in one of these nondescript tall buildings near the beach.
Luquillo is famous for several large beaches with beautiful turquoise water. The hills of El Yunque rainforest were visible in the distance from the beach and all around town. It is also famous for these kiosks, which are small restaurants near the beach that serve fried snacks and drinks amongst other things. I got this codfish kit called bacalaito, which was one of my favorite snacks throughout the trip. They are salty, crispy, and only cost a dollar or two. We spent a little time at the beach before setting off further east towards Fajardo. The rainforest was one of the destinations we were hoping to visit, and it was just south of us in Luquillo. We actually had a tour book to visit the rainforest and the bioluminescent bay before we set off for the ride, but it was cancelled due to strong rains and flooding in the park. We asked around in Luquillo and got some advice from one of our waiters on some sites inside El Yunque we can visit ourselves. One of them, called Las Pailas, was just a few miles of riding and not really out of our way, so we added it to our itinerary and headed southeast. As soon as we turned away from the coast, the scenery changed dramatically. We began to be surrounded by the rainforest with incredibly dense greenery. There were tiny streams running everywhere, and true to its name there were clouds overhead. After just a few miles into this beautiful jungle landscape, we arrived at the entrance to Las Pailas. We secured our bikes and walked along a small path towards the rocks. Wait a second, did you just see that? Rewind. I was so busy filming I almost missed this tiny snake on a rope. In the rainforest, there are birds and lizards everywhere. There was also this quiet doggy relaxing under the tree at Las Pailas. The main attraction here was this natural water slide. Visitors climb up these slippery rocks, then sit and slide down in a gap between the rocks with a strong stream pushing you down. The gap isn't very straight, so you bounce side to side on your way down. The rocks are super smooth, and so it doesn't hurt at all. The water was a lot cooler than the sea, but very nice and refreshing. We lingered for a bit before getting back on our bikes to keep going. The roads in the rainforest were well paved but were pretty narrow. Luckily it was fairly empty, and the drivers we passed were respectful and observant. We got into Fajardo in the late afternoon and checked into a small B&B. Fajardo was a charming small town with a colorful colonial downtown. It was definitely tiny compared to San Juan, but still nice to walk around even though it was lightly raining when we were there. The central square was decorated for the holidays, and some of the decorations were pretty awesome, like these oversized Game Boys right here. We decided to stay in Fajardo two nights in order to see the bioluminescent bay at night. That gave us a full day to do some local exploring. At the northern tip of Fajardo is a nature preserve called Las Cabezas de San Juan. The preserve is fairly small, but contains a lot of sites to explore. There are hiking trails through the woods, mangroves, a lighthouse, and a natural pool where seawater breaks over rocks. For some reason, the entrance to the park's road was closed off, so we had to push our bikes along the beach for a short distance until I spotted this little path. On the other side was this nicely paved trail that ran the whole length of the preserve. The bioluminescent bay is a lake located inside the park, and we got a chance to see it during the daytime. As we rode along the paved path heading north, we ran into this tiny nature walk. It goes out over the mangroves to the edges of the bay. Closer to the water, there were tiny crabs hanging out on the wood that quickly hid when I got closer. It was a fairly short walk to see the whole thing, but amazingly, we had it all to ourselves. There's a small hill further up into the park, at the top of which is an impressive lighthouse. Unfortunately, it was close to the public when we were there, so I had to observe it from the air. It was originally built by the Spanish in 1880, and it has this amazing views of the shoreline. I'm sure it would be cool to explore the inside, but I think I got a pretty good view from above. At the northern end of the preserve was a rocky beach with a small hiking trail to an overlook spot. Down below was the natural pool, called La Zanja, where seawater hits the rocky coast and then spills over gently into a gap between the rocks. People go swimming down there, but we didn't go the whole way down. The park was beautiful to visit during the daytime, and I'm glad we had our bikes with us to see the whole thing. There were lots of groups going around on foot, and I'm sure they didn't see as much as we did. At night we took a tour of the bioluminescent bay. There are only a few of these bays in the world, and Puerto Rico has a whole three of them. They are usually visited at night when tiny microorganisms in the water glow in the dark with a bluish light when disturbed. It's a beautiful sight, though it's best seen during the new moon, and we went when the moon was almost full. Sadly, none of my camera equipment was able to capture the glow, but take my word for it, it was pretty cool.
After Fajardo, we only had one night left on the road. We were rounding the northeast corner of the island and starting to head south. We chose a road just a little ways inland of the coast and were transported back into the rainforest on the eastern side of it this time. The cloud-covered hills of El Yunque were all around us once again. It was some of the most beautiful riding of the whole trip, going through such a lush green landscape. We were pretty far from the big city now, and most of what we passed were small rural communities and farmland. We took a short break at this little mountain stream along the way. We wanted to soak in as much of the nature as we could before getting back into the city. After a bit of climbing, we descended down a fairly empty road in the hills in the town of Naguabo. I was just thinking to myself about how well behaved the dogs have been in our trip when Sushita got chased by two small ones down the street in the downtown off camera, sadly. Luckily, they gave up the chase after a block or two and no one needed rabies shots. Naguabo had a really local feel to it with not a lot of people out and about. A few older gentlemen were playing dominoes in the square in front of this charming small town hall building. We carried on riding until we reached Punta Santiago, a small seaside town where we rented a place to stay. It had a bunch of beaches and many unfussy restaurants. The one main site in town was a small nature preserve and we brought our bikes there the following morning. This one was much smaller than the one in Fajardo, mostly a bunch of jungle paths to ride a bike along. There were these small ruins of an observation tower with nice views of the beach. The best part was probably on the other side where there is a big empty beach that we had entirely to ourselves. We spent a while relaxing before heading out. We rode through this small gated community before catching a ride with our bikes back to San Juan. Back in San Juan, we had the bikes for a few more hours before returning them. We were staying in the ritzy Condado neighborhood full of swanky hotels and restaurants. We agreed to meet near old San Juan and went for one last ride along the Caribbean coast. San Juan isn't the most bikeable city I've been to. It's pretty crowded and car-centric in most neighborhoods. However, there was this long, beautiful bike lane installed along the coast. It passes some of the famous sites downtown and was an awesome way to end the riding portion of our trip. Robert picked the bikes up in his van and told us he was surprised to hear someone spotted his bikes all the way out by Fajardo since most people rent bikes just to ride around San Juan. The bikes held up well and I would gladly take them out again if I was back to Puerto Rico anytime soon. We spent the rest of the day in Old San Juan, exploring the forts and historic streets once again. We ate a bunch of really nice restaurants on our trip, from fancy high-end places in San Juan to tiny coffee shops and seafood stalls. The food was consistently good, a little pricey though not any more than what we're used to back home. I didn't find a ton of information about cycling here when I was doing research for this trip, so hopefully this info is useful to anyone planning a trip around here. I think PR could be a great cycling destination, and I'd like to come back sometime and see more of the island. If you made it this far, leave a comment and let me know if you've cycled in Puerto Rico and what your impressions were. Thanks for watching.